Let's get into it now with Mr. David Price. How are yeah. you today, sir? Good a- good afternoon, I guess it is. Like I just told Colin, it's already snuck up on us. <laughs> Whereas, uh, glad to be with you today. Sounds like you have an interesting show coming up there. I uh, get to talk about all those fun things. So, uh, looking forward to this. So, we'll start uh, with, I guess, the, the big question. Um, all the classifications going down, <laughs> or the reclassifications, I should say. Uh, why in the first place did the classifications need to be changed? And uh, what was that process like to change from three classifications for football to four? Well, let me back up and go, uh, I guess, five or six years ago when uh, the SSAC Board of Control decided to uh, move to a four-class system and a pilot for basketball. And I was uh, superintendent of uh, Raleigh County Schools at that time. So, you know, as far as the reasoning behind it, uh, the conversations were that um, they didn't feel that enrollment only, which is what the SSAC had used for many, many years, uh, was accomplishing what um, it once did, that there was a, a greater gap in uh, competitive balance when it comes to that. And a lot of the small schools actually were concerned that they had to – uh, compete against some of the private schools who had the opportunity to quote recruit, and they didn't. And uh, then when you looked at the larger school end of that spectrum uh, of enrollment, when you had schools of close to 2,000, um, and then you had at the bottom end of that uh, schools of around 650 or 700. So the smallest AAA schools were closer in enrollment to the uh, smallest single A than they were the largest AAA in the classification they were participating in. So with that said, I think the SSAC at that time looked uh, trying to find a new reclassification model, and uh, that's when they determined they would use the um, – four-factor model with enrollment, uh, county seat, um, or if, you, if you were located in your county seat, excuse me, uh, the distance you were from a city of 10,000, and then an economic score of each school. Um, so, uh, you know, they looked at that. They uh, did that for basketball only as their pilot. And then um, after four years, uh, the SSAC in 2023, the Board of Control, when I refer to the SSAC, Keep in mind, I'm not referring to the office in Parkersburg. The SSAC is actually the principals of the secondary schools of West Virginia. We're the um, compliance office, if you will. We make sure that the rules are uh, uh, communicated and, uh, you know, followed uh, out there in our schools. But um, anyway, they determined that they wanted to move that to uh, other sports. They said football, both boys and girls basketball, softball, baseball, volleyball, and cheer were the sports they selected to do that with. Um, so, you know, we looked at the whole realignment over the course of the year. Um, when we entered the job in uh, last summer, uh, because that's when uh, we were having to move to that, made recommendations to the board of directors on uh, what we felt it needed to be. The board of directors uh, then made some adjustments to that. Uh, and um, then here we are uh, when uh, schools looked at it. Let me back up just a minute because they used four factors for basketball and the board of control determined that they didn't want to use four factors anymore. And again, board of control, meaning all of the principals in the state uh, in secondary schools, they determined they wanted to use three factors and eliminate the county seat factor. Um, So they did that and that did change uh, the percentages of uh, how that would be scored. And, uh, again, that was done by a third party out there when uh, a data analytics expert. They used the uh, factors from the census, Google Maps, and the State Department uh, enrollment along with certified lists from uh, West Virginia Department of Education. So with that said, uh, several schools filed appeals because they did not uh, feel that their classification was correct. Uh, the Board of Directors heard those appeals. Uh, they determined that... Um, A hardship was not uh, proven at that time. So uh, in our system, there's another appeal process. You can take it to a new level, which is uh, the review board, and that comes out of the state superintendent's office. Those folks are appointed out of the state superintendent's office. They reviewed it, remanded it back to the board of directors uh, for them to take a look at uh, some other information that they um, thought needed to be looked at. The board of directors, again, determined that even though that information was there, still no hardship had been uh, proven or um, in their eyes. 
went back to the review board, and the review board granted all 11 appeals. So with that said, it came to our office, and with that appeal process and their decision, then we were left with having to move to make those changes here this close to football season. And it had we knew the 11 appeals were uh, there, and we'd have to act on those, but after our legal counsel reviewed the whole decision, we had to act on the others that were affected as well. So, uh, you know, we, we didn't have a choice in the matter. Um, obviously, it's... Um, frustrating to uh, have to uh, deal with this at this point in time, but it is what it is, and we're doing the best we can with it. Mr. Price, the total now at 22 uh, reclassifications. Were there others that made an appeal that are either awaiting the process or were denied by any chance? There were a few other schools, and uh, without looking at the list, I can't remember who they were because that was back in January, that went through the appeal process in one level, and that was just in front of the board of directors, and decided they would not go to the review board. So their appeals ended right there. At this time, there are no other appeals uh, out there for schools because that window closed back in the winter of those who could appeal. Uh, So therefore, uh, we're ready to move forward at this time for this year. And keep in mind, this decision... It's for the 24, 25 year only, and it affects football only at this time. In, in the simplest terms that you think you could put it, or if it's not very simple, I understand. But what would you say the, the main reasoning is here that the the original classification put together and the classifications that have been put together post appeal is so different? Why why did so many of these schools win their their, their appeals? You think? Well, you know, and again, I'm not a data analytics specialist. Uh, That's the reason we have a third party who uh, is a specialist to do this. Uh, But at the same time, uh, you know, these numbers and this formula is uh, is rather complex. And um, when you're looking at uh, numbers that change, you know, um, they could change uh, in January. They can change when you're looking at different times. um, They do uh, make a difference, and um, you know, it's uh, just one of those things i know that uh former days of coaching you look at enrollment and being a principal your school enrollment is um turned into the state department the second month and that's the official enrollment of your school um and that's how funding as you know um, may or may not know that's how funding for counties is provided based on enrollment in the second month so we use that because we know it's really accurate but at the same time enrollment numbers change every day in counties Students are transferring in, transferring out every day, but there's that point in time that you use. So, you know, we believe that um, those, it's, it's a very complicated, complex system that was chosen to be used. Um, I'm sure there's going to be more conversation coming up in the future about uh, is it right. Uh, what I can tell you is there, I don't think there's any perfect system. Uh, there's always going to be stu- uh, schools that uh, will be at the bottom of the classification. Uh, they'll be the low man on the totem pole, if you will, and they would much rather be the big school in the lower classification than the little school in the classification they may be assigned to when it comes to this. And that's the reason we do, or we do it now. The SSAC has always done it on a four-year uh, cycle. Well, I go back; it used to be a two-year cycle, but it moved to a four-year cycle, um, so that it's always being reviewed. Um, there's also rules put in place that. Um, if your second month report, if you take a 20% or greater drop in enrollment, uh, that uh, you can be reclassified. Uh, now, keep in mind, schools always have the option to play up a classification, but not too many people choose to uh, use that. You mentioned it only being for football and only being for this year. What's the reasoning behind that? Well, you know, football's a different sport. Let's face it, every other uh, sport, you have sectional and regional play. Uh, football is, uh, I always said, uh, football's a tournament in itself. Uh, it starts week one, and uh, you're in a playoff, and what you're trying to do is position yourself to get to the final 16 because every game counts. Uh, in every other sport, you have sectional and regionals, and uh, everybody's in the tournament. So, uh, and, you know, it's uh, football's a different beast by the nature of the sport anyway. And um, so, and again, basketball, uh, a They've used that for four years, and it was uh, seemed very successful. Uh, you know, when the principals uh, decided at the Board of Control meeting they wanted to continue this, 
uh, it was voted on 117 to 16 in favor to move to a four class system with these sports. So overwhelmingly, the principals around the state chose to do this. After the fact, which usually happens, when you see the unintended consequences that happen, um, all of a sudden you say, oh, wait, did we make the right decision? Well, I think sometimes we've got to let things play out to see if we did and um, or see if they did. And, um, you know, right now we haven't even played the first football game. We're already making changes. So, you know, the other thing I would say about this reclassification system, too, when you look at it from a different perspective, um, you took – all of the large schools in the state and moved them and put another A next to the name and made them quad A. Took small triple A schools and large double A's. And in my mind, and again, my mind works different sometimes, we created a large double A class and then we created a small double A class, taking the large single A's and the small double A's and putting them together. And then uh, you had the single A class, which was a lot of small schools that were still left there. And there's always more of those in the state than there are large schools. Um, and by definition, you know, when you're looking at large schools in our state enrollment-wise, you're probably looking at uh, 1,200 and up. And literally, there are only about 16 of those. We're joined here by David Price, the executive director of the WVSSAC. And you just mentioned in Class 4A now due to the reclassifications of 22 total schools, uh, nine of them being former Class 4A members, putting the total to 16 for the upcoming football season, which poses the big question in Class 4A, will the playoff remain 16 teams or is there a conversation ongoing of shrinking the playoff for class 4a mr price well there have been conversations about what that would look like but at this time we're going to have to stick with the 16 team playoff so all 16 of those schools will be uh get an 11th game and um so you know they're playing for their ranking this year based on the decision that was made and i think part of the that reasoning that the board of directors didn't want to go with this originally was this simple fact that only 16 teams existed and we hadn't made any playoff uh, changes with that and again i think that would have to come from uh, the board of control with any restructuring like that and rule revisions uh so again with that uh group meeting uh actually in the spring i'm sure there's gonna be a lot of conversation around that but also around um what changes, if any, need to be made uh, moving forward for next year? Uh, we, we've heard personally that there's certain schools, uh, m- maybe just a handful in, in this, but feel kind of, th- at least in their minds, targeted by these changes, whether it's you know making life harder for them, having other schools join their division, or teams are running away from them as per- perceiving them as harder competition. What would your response be to the schools that might feel that way? Well, you know, it's um, all of that scheduling and everything that's at the school level, and people make decisions. And obviously when you have uh, a good team, you've had a good team for several years, there are some people that uh, say, hey, listen, we're not, we're not going to play you anymore. Um, you know, when you're, when you're 0-10, everybody wants to schedule you. When you're 10-0, everybody wants to avoid you. Uh, it's just the nature of it all when the school schedule, and that's the reason, uh, you know, so many schools have conferences. So you have the Mountain State Athletic Conference, Cardinal Conference, others around the state of West Virginia, and, um, you know, they uh, make their scheduling somewhat uh, simpler when you get down to it. And when you're not affiliated with a conference, it can make things more challenging trying to pick up games. And then, you know, in West Virginia, our large schools are scattered so much. Uh, you know, Eastern Panhandle, a growing area and population, as we know. Um, I think of Musselman High School all the time in the 90s. They were a double A, and now they're the second, third largest school in the state of West Virginia, um, which tells you everything you need to know about the Panhandle, and you guys know that better than anyone. Uh, at the same time, you look at the Canal Valley, which used to have all of the large schools, um, larger schools, enrollment and population is declining there. And uh, you have several schools that were large schools in the 90s, early 2000s, that are under 1,000 now. So, um, you know, it's uh, for them to have to travel for scheduling purposes and everything makes it very challenging. So, um, you know, there are schools that uh, I understand their 
frustration about scheduling. Um, but, you know, again, that's um, not something that uh, we're involved in at that school-level decision. Was there any, I guess, maybe surprising uh, appeals or ones that you maybe thought wouldn't be approved or, or I guess that you were even surprised that these schools maybe applied for uh, reclassification? Well, yeah, you know, we have appeals all the time, whether it be on student eligibility or suspensions or discipline reason, disciplinary reasons around schools, uh, coaches, uh, players, whatever the case may be. This one was very unique because there's never been an appeal process for reclassification, and this was put in place by the Board of Control, I guess, during the toward the end of the pilot in basketball uh, for these specific reasons. And, um, you know, I, did I expect, um, the appeals, I did expect appeals to come. Was I surprised of how the decision was uh, handed down? Yeah, I was because, you know, when appeals come, they come individually by each individual school for uh, their own specific reason or an individual person for the specific reason. And that's the way these came to us. But at the same time, the Board of Review handed it down as a group. And the way it was written and the way it was handed down was a shock to us. Uh, we received it at 5 o'clock on Monday evening at the end of the work day. And um, you know, I just happened to be uh, getting ready to leave the office and thought, well, I'll check my email one more time before I leave. And sure enough, there it was. And um, evidently, uh, some schools had already opened their email because it was out there before we knew about it. So um, we knew the next day that we would have to start to see how this was going to affect us. Uh, well, it wasn't the next day. It was by 5.15. My phone started ringing and stayed busy till about midnight uh, that night uh, trying to, uh, you know, see the impact this was going to have and um, on the phone and meeting with our legal counsel the next day and having to make these decisions. So, you know, we knew that there was going to be some uh, challenges and some uh, uh, backlash from it, but uh, at the same time, it's the hand we've been dealt, and we're going to work through it and uh, get ready for kickoff uh, here in the next week or so. Mr. Price, we kind of touched on it earlier, the uh, rating formula that came a part of reclassifying all these schools when it became a uh, 4A system in the state. And once the reclassifications uh, were brought to light here Within the past week, week and a half for the 22 total schools, there was a report stating that the uh, components of this rating formula might have had some inaccuracies that caused this mess. Uh, can you address that and if there's any truth behind it? And if so, is that being changed for the future? I'm not sure I understand your question. You're saying the rating formula. Are you talking about for football rankings or are you talking about reclassification uh the reclassification when it became a 4a system uh specifically the economic rating the location ratings uh and all those components well and again like i said earlier everyone was aware of where this data would come from and um they, they weren't aware of what those numbers may be once they were um um you know kind of that uh, put into play, I guess you would say. Normalized would be the uh, phrase I should use probably. But at the same time, once they came into play, they saw the impact it would have and started questioning whether it's the right way to go or not after they chose overwhelmingly to do it. And um, so, you know, a lot of schools that did appeal uh, voted in favor of this. And um, so, um, you know, the uh, again, it comes back to once – it was put into play what was our unintended consequences. And like I said, some were kind of taken back by it. And, you know, a pilot is always there to work out the bugs. And some of the things that were in place in the pilot and some of the numbers uh, had to be adjusted, obviously, because you went from four factors to three. But at the same time, there may have been some things that uh, the data experts saw that needed to be changed, and those were things that they talked about uh, through the uh, Board of Control. Uh, they did a presentation to make sure everyone understood uh, how these factors would be uh, played. But like you said, I am sure coming up in the future, there will be a lot of discussion around that over the next year and to uh, uh, determine um, 
if uh, th- th- things need to be changed. And keep in mind, all of our rules in the SSAC, they come from principles. We don't make those in Parkersburg. We don't set up here and try to figure out new rules. Uh, those are all made by our principles, and they have to be submitted by January the 15th for the Board of Control. The Constitution and Bylaws Committee, which is a group of uh, five principals around the state, they review all of those uh, new rule proposals and revisions to our current rules, and then those go up uh, for discussion and debate and a vote for our Board of Control. It's more or less like our legislative process, if you will, and um, then uh, they will determine that. And I'm sure that uh, um, based on um, conversations I'm uh, hearing around the state, that this will be a topic, and uh, we'll see how all that plays out. If we can get one last question uh, for you. Uh, what would you say uh, your expectations are or what people's expectations should be for this football season and what you might already be forecasting as changes that might have to come after the season? Obviously, with these changes coming so close to the season, there there might be some, so, you know, it's a, it's a sort of chaotic situation where teams have changed their classification. Do you forecast do you have things in mind you're already forecasting as changes after this season for football? Well, I, again, I don't because those changes and recommendations don't come from me. Those changes and recommendations come through the principals, the board of uh, control, the board of directors, uh, constitution and bylaws committee. Those are the groups that will determine all of that. And once they do, then we're the ones who have to make sure they're implemented. So that's not something that, um, you know, I, I could actually uh, comment on or speculate, but uh, would I expect some changes? I sure would. Um, so, but at the same time, we'll just have to wait and see what those are and uh, how they come about. All right, Mr. Price, thank you for your time. And uh, we're looking forward to football season. It's definitely going to be different, but uh, thank you for the time again. Well, as, as I tell everybody, you know, schools have their schedules. Those didn't change. They're going to be playing every Friday night. We need to be out supporting our kids. But at the same time, to make playoffs, make it Final 16, you still have to win some games. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to kickoff. We think it's going to be a great season, exciting season, a lot of good athletes out there. And we definitely don't want this to be the focus. We want our student athletes to be the focus in the game. So uh, we're looking forward to it. Thank you all for having me. Uh, anytime, I uh, look forward to talking to you again. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you.